Now that we're familiar with the basic concept of feedback loops from the previous presentation, we can examine how feedback loops are used in building simulation models. So that you can understand this in depth, let's build a model from scratch. This will not take very long. We will be using VenSim, a free modeling tool. The first thing we're going to do is start adding our variables. Let's go ahead and add population first. This is a stock. A stock is, is in a quantity of something that changes over time. Let's put it right around there. Now let's add a rate to the model. We're going to add the birth rate. Okay, rolling right along. Let's tidy up a little and slide this over here. Okay. Now, let's see. We need a few more variables. How about the fractional birth rate? Oops, we've misspelled it, so let's patch it up. Okay, now let's pretty it up just a little. Put it where we'd like it. Okay, and let's do one more. This is our initial population. Uh, put this right over here. Now let's add our, our arrows. This, this fractional birth rate affects that. Because it's a constant, we're going to use a standard of dotted lines. The initial population is, of course, the initial population of our stock. And the population influences the birth rate. So we add this. Now that is the feedback loop. Let's go ahead and give that a name. Okay, let's uh, make it a little bigger, make it blue. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Could be a little bigger though. There we go, we'll put it right here. Now, because this is a reinforcing loop, let's add one of these. Make it bold. Okay, let's see if we got it right. Now, these are our variables. And this is the main loop, okay? Goes round and round and round. <coughs> Before we uh, talk our way through it, let's complete building the model. We've got to set our, our various equations. Let's see what we're going to do here. Let's start here with initial population. Let's start out with 10. Now this is a constant. This is uh, people. Uh, minimum value of 0. Uh, let's allow a maximum value of 100. And an increment of 1. Okay, as you can see, we're done with that one. Now the, here's our population. Let's see, initial value is going to be initial valuation. Units is going to be people. And that's about all we've got to do that. Now our fractional birth rate is the percentage of the population that uh, <coughs> bears children each year. We're going to use uh, 1 percent, 0.01. Okay, this is percent and a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of say 10 percent uh, and an increment of 1 percent. Okay, we're done with that. Now the birth rate is a terribly difficult equation. It's the fractional birth rate times the population. The units are people per year. <coughs> now we've got our basic model done. Okay, 
<coughs> let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Not bad. It runs. See that little graph? Okay. Now, before we walk our way around it, let's do a little more work. Okay, now let's add the graph. We're going to add the graph over here. We click this little tool here, click the graphs tab. We've actually already built the graph, but let's see if we had to enter it. These are all the things we enter. Let's go ahead and say OK. And now let's go ahead and put that right here. Oops. OK. Now, let's pick a nice position for it, like right around here. Okay, now we've got a graph done. Let's run the simulation again. Poof, there's our population growth graph. Now we can take a look at the model and understand how feedback loops really work. Here's the feedback loop right here. Let's stop the model from running. Okay, remember we have a population stock right here. Okay, and we have the birth rate here. We have the fractional birth rate here. <coughs> the initial population here. The initial population was 10. If we start it back up, we of course can see that reminder. <coughs> now, 10 people times 1% equals the birth rate during one year. So that starts at pretty low, but it's added to the population. So the next year we have 10.1 people, and the year after that about 10.21 people, and so on. And so this times uh, that equals that. That is added to this, and then of course that times fractional birth rate equals the next year's birth rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a, a very simple reinforcing loop. It's hard to be much simpler. Now let's examine what happens if we change various things in these variables. See this initial population? Now as we change that, I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we can see that if we reduce the initial population, the curve grows slower. Here's an initial population of 3, 2, 1. Well, now what happens if we try 0? Well, no growth at all. There's nobody to have any babies. So let's put it back at 10, which is what it was. Now let's grow over to the fractional birth rate. Suppose this is 0. What would happen? Well, of course, another flat curve. Now this time the initial population stays at, zero, at 1, excuse me, at 10. If we raise this, we can see it just stays flat at whatever we set it at. Let's put it back to 10. Now let's go back to our fractional birth rate. 1%, 2%, 3%, oh, it's just growing so fast, I hardly know what to say. 4%, 5%. That is a population explosion. Let's run it all the way up to 10%. That's the kind of curve we don't want to see. Now, if we set the initial population lower, does that curve grow slower? Not that much. As soon as it gets started, it just runs away. Whereas before, with a much lower fractional birth rate of, say, 1%, it grew much slower. So this should acquaint you with uh, simulation models, how they're built, and what reinforcing feedback loops are. What you should take away from here is the fact that reinforcing feedback loops exist in all dynamic systems. <coughs> they cause dynamic behavior in the form of changes over time. It might be fast changes, medium changes, very slow changes, and of course, no change. They can be dead flat. They could also drop down like that, which we have not shown. 
Okay, this completes the presentation of the population growth simulation model. Thanks a lot.